Hello guys, David here with the first five things you should do after you install Windows 10. The first thing is customize the start menu. So notice there'll be some default groups and tiles. What you should do is unpin the ones you don't even use. So for example, let's say you never use the People app. Unpin those and make sure that you're putting only things on your start menu that you use. The next thing is resize the start menu. So you can make it as wide or as narrow as you'd like. In fact, if you unpin all the tiles, you can even completely compress it down to just this section. Next, name and move groups. So there'll be some default ones. So if you click a title, you can just rename it really easily. And of course, with this double line slider, you can move groups around. Next, customize user folders that appear here. So what you can do is you can add things like links to downloads, documents, etc. And that's done by going to settings, going to personalization, clicking start, and then selecting which folders appear on start. So I'm going to do downloads, pictures, home group, and personal folder. Now when I click start, I have really quick access to these items as well. Number two is customize the taskbar and the action center. So what you can, this is the first thing I did when I got Windows 10, is right click Cortana, select Cortana and go to show Cortana icon. That way there's not a really big search box taking up space on your taskbar. Next, personalize colors. So another thing that I did was I went to settings, personalization, colors, and then I selected my theme color, but you couldn't really tell except for these tiles. So I selected show color on start taskbar and action center, and now there's this blue on this overlaid on start, the taskbar, and in the action center, which I like very much. And then of course I have transparency on. If you don't like that, you can make them just solid colors. The next thing is choose actions you want. So when you click the action center, you'll see there are these options here. Because this is a desktop PC, tablet mode is grayed out. So I'm going to replace that. Go to system, notifications and actions, and I'm going to click this tablet mode one and change it to quiet hours. And that brings me to my next one. If you're getting annoyed with notifications coming in, just click quiet hours and you won't get any more notifications popping up on your screen. Number three is customize Microsoft Edge. So Edge is Microsoft's new browser. It's very fast and has some great capabilities. So the first thing that I did was I hit settings, then show favorites bar. And this is a really great way to customize your browser from the get-go. You can even import your favorites from another browser, for example, Internet Explorer or Chrome. And that's a really easy way to import them directly in. Or what I would do is go to a website, click this favorites, select favorites bar from create in folder, and then it's just one click away to some of your favorite websites. Another thing that people have done, including myself, is add the home button. So go to settings, Scroll down to view advanced settings and select show the home button. You can now select a home page URL. So when you click the home button, it takes you to that page. Lastly, you can change the theme. So by default, it's light. You can also change it to dark if that's what, something you prefer. Number four is pin important things. So the first thing you might think of is pinning an application to start. So for example, let's say I want to pin OneNote. So the first thing I do is click All Apps. I'm going to choose M from the jump list to go to Microsoft Office 2013. There's OneNote. I'm going to right click it, pin to start. There it is. I'm going to drag it to this daily group. 
I'll also pin people, even though I unpinned it earlier. There. Next, pin apps to the taskbar. So another option is pin to taskbar. Now it's appeared down here on the taskbar. You can move it anywhere you'd like. And there it is. Next thing is pin documents into jump lists on the taskbar. So if you right click an application, it will show you your recently opened or used documents or files. In this case, I'm using Word. So I'm going to pin Beyond Tweeting Draft 4. And now it is under the list of pinned documents. This is a way to keep track of really, really important ones that you use often, but it also shows you some recent ones. Next, pin a folder to quick access. So when you open Explorer now, you get to this quick access menu, which are frequently used folders, folders you pin, and then also recent files. So let's say I go to my user folder, I want to pin videos. Just right click videos, go to pin to quick access, and there it appears, right there. So if I click quick access, videos now appears as a pinned folder. Next, use apps. So first off, I encourage you to try the built-in applications. For example, maps. And try out some of the cool stuff you can do with them. Next, get more applications from the store. So when you go to the Microsoft Windows Store, you'll see there's a lots of applications to choose from. If you see one that interests you, you can click it and download it. There's lots of great applications on the store, so look around for a little bit. Next, try snapping applications. Windows 7 and Windows 8 users might be familiar with that. You drag it to the side of the screen, it occupies a section, and then with Snap Assist, you're able to choose another application. Well now you can do something new, which is snap to a corner. So go to a corner, and it now occupies a fourth of the screen. And so you can do that with up to four applications per screen, depending on your screen's resolution. And the last thing is set default applications. So with the upgrade, Windows may have changed some of those things. So click System, click Default Apps, and you can do things like change the default music player, photo viewer, etc. Or if you want a master list, you can click Set Defaults by App. It'll load all the applications you have. You're then able to scroll to the application you want to set as default, and set it as default just with this click. That's all for this video, but subscribe for more Windows 10 related content. Thank you so much for watching.